Hey guys, how are you going? Welcome to Hold the Ball HCB. Let me drop it down. Hope you guys are having a good Sunday today. Hope everything is well. Um, look, this is my basic Warriors reflection on how we went and performed, mixing with a bit of the you know post game review, as well as just giving you guys my general thoughts on the player stats, team stats, as well as some key points that we can talk about and perhaps uh, get some engagement and tell me you guys what you're thinking as well. But uh, before we start, I did post a video um, about the Indigenous round and giving guys my thoughts on why I think it's integral and important for the NRL to also do a Pacifica slash Māori round as well, which will highlight the talent that the people of the Pacific, Polynesia and Māori have shown. And why I think it would be good to just have it generally a year round thing where you can see the culture, the players and what they've contributed to the game. So have a look at that. Tell me guys what your thoughts are, whether you agree or disagree, and we'll just go from there. But uh, have a look at it as well. Still Indigenous round, so uh, let's get into it. Um, but look, here we go. Let's start. So as you guys know, the Cowboys won 29 points to 28 in a heartbreaking game. Well, it depends on who you support, right? You're relieved if you're a Cowboys fan, you're ecstatic, you're over the moon. And if you're a Warriors fan like myself, you've just come out of the... You've just come out from the caves now. Um, heartbroken, devastated, but uh, you're hopefully slowly getting over it, just like I am. Just giving you guys a quick update on the player stats. So the, the player with the most runs for our team was Reese Walsh with 227 metres, who I thought played in a very good game. His try again when Helam Luki chases him down and he tackles him, I thought that he had fro thrown him out, but, he, but, but uh, by some luck, he bounced off his body and managed to score the try. So, yeah, so Reese Walsh, just wow. That's all I can say. Post contact meters was Roger Tuivasa Shek with 75 meters. Tackle break was Montoya with five tackle breaks. The most tackles in the team was Wade Egan with 57. He usually averages around the most tackles per game in the Warriors team. And the most tackles with no misses was Leeson Armour with 25 tackles, no misses, who came off the bench. And he played another good role as well. And I'm sort of seeing a better performance from him on a weekly basis. There were, I think, especially heading into the season, he was okay at best. I think he was okay, but now I'm sort of seeing his impact off the bench and why he is so important in the team. And it's just happened in that last couple of weeks as well. So he's been putting up his hands. He's been giving us really good, solid minutes, solid performances all around. And that's what you want from your bench player. There's more of that stuff. So Armel, good on you. Team stats, well, errors, Warriors 8, Cowboys 15. Cowboys were obviously very uh, ill-disciplined at times, but Warriors just couldn't capitalise off it. Penalties was 4-2, to two. missed tackles was 27, Warriors 30, Cowboys. Possession was 47% to 53%. Again, very tight, very nitty sort of a game. There wasn't too much... Uh, Ball heading Cowboys way, though it felt like it at times. Um, Warriors did well to bounce back in the second half, and I think that's where we sort of got the ball back a bit more. But I'm um, overall again, um, just a game where it just matters and it comes down to moments, situations. So completion 83% Warriors, Cowboys 80. Again, another clean game from both teams. Generally, Warriors do well to get over that 80% mark anyway. I think we're one of the the best completed set teams in the game. It's good to see that. Tackle breaks 30 to Cowboys 27 and tackles overall was 208 to 190 for the Cowboys. So it shows that we made over 18 tackles more in the game. Though it seems to still be our issue. Key points and basically what I want to talk about. Defense. That's another game with leaked 25 plus points again. That's it. And it's all going well to... Uh, look at attack and, and and it's great i know we have good attack that's not the issue the issue is defending our line just defending in general too many missed tackles too many league tries you know we had 27 missed tackles 27 who to say that if we even had half of that we probably would have won the game quite comfortably katoa katoa uh he Played a poor game. I believe he got subbed off in the second half and that was the last we saw of him. Unforced errors. 
trying to force the, the offload when he shouldn't have led, led to at least a try or two. I hope, and I'm being nice here, I hope he doesn't play for the Warriors in the first grade again this year. Injuries, obviously injuries, sure, but I mean, you, you bring in Jackson Frey this time, don't you? You don't, you don't bring him in, right? Like, he just doesn't play anymore. And as much as I've tried, and as much as I've tried to have faith in Gatoa, I just don't think he's up to standard. And it was evident again, though he was trying his best, and I get it, high risk, high reward, I get it, but it doesn't pay off when we end up looking like a fool anyway. So for me personally, talking about is Gatoa, and I just don't think he should play first grade for us again, if we can help it. That's my thoughts. Jess Devanga, again. We like him because of his bulldog mentality, right? The dog in him is good. He's a big dog. But ultimately, he can be very ill-disciplined. And as uh, Nathan Brown said, cost us the game. So you can say that uh, him and Gato in the first half were very costly in that, in, the next, in that period there. It was about four tries, I believe, leaked because of those two players alone. And though we did well to catch up, we lose ultimately, and to be fair, had it not been for those incidences, we probably could have won this game quite comfortably. Again, so what do you do? Jazz Tavanga is a player that I like and I don't like. I think I'm leaning more to don't like. I like what he brings, but I don't like the ill discipline that comes with it, these pros and cons. But I mean, what do you do when you're always down a man if he's gonna play like this? This game will eventually weed out the players who are not disciplined. That's the way this game is heading. That's what I suspect. Jazz Devanga is not that player who is going to be disciplined. He's going to be who he is. He's a mongrel. He's a dog, right? And I mean that in a complimentary way. He's a tough, gritty SOB. But in this sort of context, do we need it? I don't think so. I don't think so. So, uh, look, that's my thoughts on him. Nathan, uh, the, the coach will do as he wants with him, but that's just my thoughts. No one to talk about the halves. <laughs> I've heard management poor, inconsistent, not good enough, not up to par. I've heard all these things. My personal opinion, I just think it's a disconnect. Something there is wrong. It seems like they're two different players, right? Their halves are supposed to work together in unison, more often than not. But I just feel like they're two different players with two different set of skills and I think one of them is probably in the wrong position and I think that's CHT and I just feel like he offers such a good defensive game and such a passing like I think he's a good passer but but like from the halfback role I don't think he's a halfback I think he's better off either coming out from from the interchange and going lock or maybe playing a bit of dummy half whatever or being a centre altogether. Now, what do you think? Do you think he should move position or do you think he should stay halfback? Because I don't even know what he is. Bar from giving some good kicks there, and, I, and I'm, I'm not trying to run him down because I think he played a good game. But I just feel like, you know, if in terms of halfback, like, I just feel like we need something more than what he gives us in that position. I feel, and I'm not saying I want him out of the team. I think he's, he can play well for us. Honestly, interchange or centre or lock, you know, that's just what I think. I think he's probably a naturally born, he's a natural born centre, if you ask me. I think that's where he's leaning towards. He's got the attributes. He's a good defensive menace. He can hit you hard. But I just don't think he's a halfback. As for Nikorima, well, again, defensively poor. Put some good shots here and there. But I mean, again, just the structure of these two, like, you know, I just feel like they, they I just feel like they, don't carry each other well. They don't carry the team well, and they're the ones, they're the front runners. It's not Reese Walsh, it's not Roger Tuvasashek, it's these two, in case we forgot. And I just want to quickly bring up Pompey. With Pompey as well, and out there in the centre, I think he's not a centre, he's a winger for me personally. But I think in saying that, it's time to bring in Rocco Berry. Bring Rocco Berry and get him more games. We need him to play more, he's a young blood here. Yes, Pompey is young as well. Maybe interchange them one game on, one game off. We'll have them battle out. But, you know, I reckon Rocker Berry deserves a shot at the centre position as well. Another player I want to talk about is Jermaine Darnold-Brown. And look, he brings a good defensive game. 26 tackles, one miss. 
You know, you can't complain that. You can't complain there. However, on the meter end of things, he is extremely poor. He's on the poor end. And I get he's not the best prop running around. I get he's not on that much. I get we got him for cheap. Sure. But the bloke's over, what? Six foot three, six foot four. And he's over 110 kgs. You don't think that could somehow replicate into something? You don't think that could somehow mean something, equate to something? You know, bar one point in the game, he actually just ran for 14 meters, including the last game against the Tigers, which he only ran for nine in a, losing, in a, in a winning game. This game here, he ran for, I believe, what, 50 odd meters at the end. Not good enough for a prop. Not good enough, right? Bunty R4, I would have a head of him. I like Bunty R4. I'm a, I'm a big Bunty fan. I'd have Bunty R4 in front of him in the rotations. Have Armal R4, um, Adam for Noah Blake, and Evans. That's it. And then for the second row, you bring in um, Jackson Frey. You put him ahead of Katoa, if, if need be. That's it. I also need, want to sort of ponder another thing as well. We've been hearing his name. We've seen his name pop up. He just recently signed a new deal as well. But Daniela Otukolo. I think we bring him in, especially if things are on the other end of Jazz. I'm sure what's happening there. Maybe you bring him in. I reckon bring in Otukolo to, to have him play that Jazz role. You know, he's he's um, I think he's got some things to offer. I haven't seen him play properly yet, but I have heard some good things about him. Bring him on. Bring him on. He's a hooker as well. So let him interchange with Egan. Let's just get some sort of dynamic happening there. You know, let's just see something. Let's change it up a bit. But yeah, that's my thoughts anyway. But yeah, those are just my thoughts anyway on the team. And uh, just quickly as well, we've got a buy next week. What are your thoughts on co-captains? Do we need one? Who's going to be the captain for next year? Who do you think? Anyway, bye week next week. A game we shouldn't have lost, ultimately. It sucks. It's going to hurt us. I hope it doesn't destroy our season. But uh, it is what it is for now, anyway. But uh, look, thanks again for watching, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And if you're Chanel Harris Tavita and you're looking right in the posts and you're about to drop kick the ball, what are you going to do? Hold the ball, pass it, or run it. Do something besides drop goal. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy, and I'll be back for another video. And just remember, hold the ball.